Enes, uh, we read many posts of you. Uh, we read many statements of you in some interviews, you know, concerning the bond that you have, you know, as a Turkish uh, uh, citizen with uh, the Greek citizens, you know. Also, uh, it was very generous of you uh, and very human, you know, to, to spend some money and to help, you know, the whole situation with what happened, you know, in Mati uh, with, uh, with the whole situation. It was very sad, you know, for everybody here in uh, Greece. But uh, how did this bond start? I mean, obviously, I remember first time I was in Greece, it was when I was 16 years old with a Turkish national team. And from the you know first time I stepped in Greece, everybody was so nice. Uh, people were very welcoming and hospitality was amazing. And you know, because growing up, people were always telling me Turkish people and Greek people are don't like each other. And I was like, that's wrong. You know, that, that shouldn't be the case because it doesn't matter what your background is. It doesn't matter where you're from. In the end, we are all human, you know? So that's why, you know, the, every time I, I visited Greece many times and every time I went there, the food was amazing. Culture, were, uh, culture was beautiful. People were really nice and warm. And I remember first time helping Greece when the wildfire happened. I was like, we need to do something about this because first of all uh they are my neighbors you know and second every time i go there they were so nice to me so that's why i sent thousands and thousands of dollars when the wildfire happened i just wanted to help the greek people um it's just so amazing to you know just just give back to not just your people but the people that you know that you never seen before so that's why for me it was uh, very important. For you, your second home is the U.S. Uh, and obviously with the whole situation it's happening with your country, it's the first uh, home for you right now in the last uh, almost uh, 10 years and a half. Uh, uh, when do you plan to go home? When do I plan to go back to Turkey? I mean, uh, if you look at what's happening in my home, home country right now, obviously there are so many problems that are happening. Uh, there is no democracy, there is no freedom of speech, religion, or expression, and Turkish government using their power, they abuse human rights, you know, and there are so many political prisoners and journal journalists in it right now in the jails waiting uh, for help, and what I'm doing is trying to use my platform to be a voice of all those innocent people out there who don't have a voice. Uh, just because of I talk about these uh, conversations, obviously, it affected me and my uh, citizenship. You know, Turkish government revoked my passport and put my name on Interpol list. But I think what I'm doing is is right because I'm doing this for innocent people and all those political uh, prisoners. But once the regime, Erdogan regime changes, uh, I will definitely would love to go back to my country and see my family, friends and uh, my neighbors again, because at the end, that's my uh, country. Is it true that uh, you're planning to get an uh, American name as well? I am actually be going to become an American citizen uh, in uh, three months. Mm -hmm. And once I become an American citizen, I am, I'm not going to change my name, but I'm going to add an American name. Yeah. You know, it's going to be my uh, middle name. So I'm still thinking about it. Ah, you, you, you haven't decided yet about the, uh, the American name. I, no, I have not. <laughs> decided yet. Uh, after of, uh, what you're saying about uh, Erdogan, the Turkish government, do you feel to be threatened in the States? Because I've read someone that uh, you have uh, the FBI with you. Yep. I mean, just because of, I talk about these issues, obviously, like I said, it affected me and my uh, family. And when you are fighting against the dictatorship, uh, they are not going to like that because you're exposing them in an international uh, media. And just because of I, I am trying to be the voice of all those innocent people, they are they threaten me, yes, that's mm -hmm. correct. And I get probably death threats every week. And you know, in the United States, I don't think they can do any kind of operations because there are rule and, uh, rule and uh, laws here 
there are checks and balances and um you know there are you know fbi is protecting me here but in many other countries in the world it could be very dangerous so that's why i'm waiting to become an american citizen and then i'm going to start uh, traveling uh lately your father was a political prisoner uh, the last two years and uh, he was released after the charges uh, dropped it uh, but as you said you're not finished uh, i mean uh, your dad was just one uh, person what are you planning to do from now on you know i you know my family is only one my dad was only one you know there are so many political prisoners out there uh, in the jail their situation is way worse than mine but the one thing that i will do i won't i will not stop talking about this issue. issues till every political prisoners uh, prisoners are free in turkish uh, jails but after i become an american citizen i am planning to bring my uh, my family to uh, america so you know so they can be uh, free again is it is it something that uh, you thinking uh, to be a politician in the future <laughs> you know i sit down so with so many politicians i had a conversation with so many uh, politicians and you know they are telling me actually that i have a future in politics um maybe after basketball you never know you know i had a really good conversation with the mayor of mykonos mm-hmm. and he actually invited me to mykonos this summer and he told me hey uh when you come here we can do a basketball camp i can show you around and we can have some amazing food and uh, hang out here and i was su- super excited How would you describe uh, Erdogan? And if, if you have the opportunity to talk with him, what would you tell him? I describe him as a dictator, and I describe him uh, as someone uh, who has big egos and who is uh, using his power to abuse uh, human rights and um, and journalists and political uh, uh, prisoners. he wants to be a one man show in the turkey and if you're a media outlet if you're a journalist if you are um anyone against erdogan that you'll be in a jail the next day and turkey um geopolitically is a very important place because what happens in turkey it affects middle east and europe mm-hmm. and uh, when i call erdogan as dictator is the re- one of the reason is you know he let 3.5 uh, million refugees in Turkey and now he threatens the whole Europe and saying if you guys don't listen what i have to say i'm going to let all these re- uh, refugees go to Europe so this is unacceptable and if i ever sit down with erdogan and if i had anything to say to him probably i would i wouldn't even talk I will just spit on his face and leave the room. Mm-hmm. And uh, my last question from you is also thousands of Turkish dissidents uh, fleeing the crackdown in Turkey, uh, sought refuge in Greece the past few years. How do you think Greece handled this uh, situation? Amazing. I cannot thank Greece enough. You know, I cannot thank Greece enough because uh, just because of uh, Erdogan's pressure, There are so many families are escaping Turkey and going to these European uh, countries. And obviously just because the closest one uh, to Turkey is Greece. And there are so many uh, families are going to Greece. And, you know, from day one, uh, the, whole, the whole Greek people in Greece opened their arm and giving them a warm welcome. So uh, whenever I had an interview, the one thing I say, I cannot think you guys enough because of what you guys do to all those innocent people and all those you know turkish refugees because they are getting treated uh better in greece than turkey so i cannot thank you guys enough